Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier ran into an interesting piece of malware that uh, bypassed the security stack and was luckily uh, reported by the end user. Now, the big question, of course, was why did the malware make it so far, given that this particular end user was protected by several layers of different tools that are commonly used uh, to find malware like this. And the malware itself was uh, sort of well-known, at least it was a well-known um, family of uh, malware and should have been detected. But in this particular case, the attacker played an interesting and very simple trick actually by embedding a SIP bomb into the binary. SIP bombs are short files that are constructed in such a way that once they're being decompressed, they become very large. Now, in some cases, they can be terabytes in size. In this case, it was just 400 megabytes after expanding the file, but this was big enough in order to prevent an analysis of the file. Overall, the original SIP archive was only two megabytes in size, which is certainly within a range of what you typically see for malicious attachments. Xavier's diary does cover how he went about analyzing this particular sample and uh, how he was able to figure out uh, that it was uh, one of these SIP bombs. So take a look if you want to know more details. And Cisco patched an issue in its iOS XR software that's uh, well related to the health check feature. The problem here is that health check does implement a Redis database and this Redis database is exposed to the world by default by opening TCP port 6379. But Redis isn't really designed to be exposed like this. It uh, doesn't, in particular, in the setup that Cisco uses, uh, use any sort of additional authentication and such. So by exposing the database, an attacker could gain full access to the database and, for example, uh, write files, uh, read the database, write to the database. Some of the impact here is mitigated by the database actually running inside a container but an attacker would certainly have access to the container's file system. The most straightforward fix here would, of course, be an upgrade of your software. However, there are two workarounds that Cisco offers. One is just to disable the health check and uninstall actually the associated RPM or the second one. And that's the one I would have thought of first, but Cisco sort of uses that as a secondary fix. If you don't want to disable the health check, and that would be to block port 6379. Cisco points out that uh, blocking the port, the way they describe it here, is only partially successful in that it does not prevent exploitation from a trusted system. And for more details, see the link in the show notes. And last weekend, this weekend, we had another CanSec West and with that, another Pwn to Own contest. Now, this contest, I think, is now in its 15th year and famous for really pretty much toppling any software, in some cases also hardware, uh, being uh, put up uh, as part of the contest. This year was no exception. We got uh, new exploits for Ubuntu, for Windows, uh, for Microsoft Teams, and even uh, Tesla was hacked in terms of uh, breaking out of the sandbox in the infotainment system on a Tesla Model uh, 3. All vulnerabilities are reported to respective uh, companies and they have 90 days uh, to come up with a patch. Otherwise, uh, details may be released uh, even if no patch is available. And thanks to Sonatype for scanning proactively PyPy packages. Uh, they found a relatively new Python package, uh, PyMathka, that implements a Cobalt Strike. The goal here is probably to uh, get people that actually want to install PyKafka, which 
is installed uh, 4 million times. However, looks like Sonar Type was fast enough and Pi Mafka, the typo version, only has been downloaded 300 times so far. And Netgear released an interesting advisory stating there is a vulnerability in their BR200 and BR500 uh, routers, but uh, Netgear isn't able to patch those vulnerability due to technical limitations outside of Netgear's control, according to the advisory. Now, if your router is less than a year old, which I assume means it's still under warranty, then they will give you a free SXR30 router. If you did purchase it before, uh, more than a year ago, then you'll get a 50% discount. So at least you'll be paying 50% less for the next crappy piece of Netgear equipment that they may or may not fix in the future. But well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.